Hi there, I'm Christy Tatro, the Director of Girl Impact for American Heritage Girls, and my team help work on the girl handbooks and write the identity badge. Hi, I'm Becky, and I'm the Graphic Designer at American Heritage Girls, and I help design the girl handbook, and I helped with creating the graphic design badge. Today we are going to talk about the basic principles of design. Becky, can you list some of the basic principles of design and share a little bit about how you use them in your everyday work? Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. So basic principles of design are things like line and shape and color, um, font, texture and pattern, and um, I use those every day in all the designs that I create and I'm constantly thinking about um, which elements to use and which elements to eliminate. And there's one particular design principle that I use quite often and that is um, using a spice element. And what I mean by that is think of it as when you're making a soup and you throw in all the ingredients and then at the very end you just sprinkle in a little bit of cinnamon or maybe a little bit of oregano and that's going to really give your soup the wow factor that makes it absolutely delicious. People will be like, oh my gosh, what's in this soup? It's so good. Um, uh, one of my design professors shared this principle with me years ago and I have used it in everything since then. Um, it's really what makes the design have that wow factor. And something else I like to compare it to is in nature, like if you're out and you see this beautiful horizon of you know deep green pine trees, and then on one of the branches is just a little tiny red bird, everybody would be like, oh my goodness, did you see that red bird? And that is the wow factor of that, that scene and that landscape. That's what really makes it stand out and be different than just you know the plain evergreen trees. Um, so, or think of it like when you're painting something with blues or aquas and purples, maybe consider at the end just putting in just a dash of yellow or maybe just a pop of orange or red because that is really going to set your piece of art apart from just being bland. Okay, great. Today we are going to dive in deeper on how to create the identity badge as Becky shows how to make the identity cards for the badge. Becky, how would you start making an identity card? Well, the very first thing I would do is read the directions and find out or get a very clear understanding on what the task is. And then after I was sure of the direction, I would start writing down ideas and sketches in my sketchbook. And uh, this is something I highly recommend is um, one of these awesome spiral bound sketchbooks. And you can see I have tons of ideas and thoughts and it's just a great way to put everything down in on paper and so for the identity badge one of the first things they had asked was um, in your own words give the definition of identity and the definition of personality so after I did that it does then say read Ephesians 1 and um, using index cards or a piece of paper or a sketch pad write down at least five of the characteristics on separate cards as I am statements. So after reading Ephesians, um, I picked actually eight things that I wanted to, uh, that really spoke to me when I read the scripture. And those are, I am blessed, I am holy and blameless, I am a daughter of Jesus Christ, I am redeemed, I am forgiven, I am united with him, I am promised the Holy Spirit, and I am saved. And of all of those, then the directions ask, you know, pick one and that speaks to you and then create an identity badge out of that. So what really jumped out to me was that I am forgiven. And I thought that's the one I'm going to go with. And so the front side will have the I am forgiven on the card and the back side will have the scripture. And um, my scripture is going to say, in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. So, after I have all that in mind, <clears throat> I want to think, who is this going to be for? Because it could be for anybody. We could give it to children, we could give it to our girlfriends, our parents, friends, but I really recommend narrowing it down to somebody specific, so then you can also narrow down your design and what the design is going to look like. So. I personally would like to make this for teenagers. So that's the direction I'm going to head with um, 
what the design is going to look like. It's not going to be real cutesy or fun or flowery. It's going to be more kind of modern and contemporary because, in my opinion, I think that's what a lot of teenagers will gravitate towards. So in doing so, I got my sketches. And you can either um, sketch down in a book like this, which I did, but I'm also going to use a software program, Photoshop, and show you a little bit of where my ideas are going with the I am forgiven. So the first thing I would do is just, just really rough. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty. Just start making your card. This will be the front and this will be the back. And I'm thinking I'm doing a square <clears throat> because I don't want to do a business card size because it's very predictable and it's overused. So let's do something unique that when I hand it to people, they'll be interested in it and be like, oh, this is a really cool shape. So, um, you know, your first idea is never going to be the one you're going to go with, but you got to get it out there. So I'm thinking maybe you are forgiven right on the front. In the back, maybe in the center, will be our scripture verse. So then, you know, that takes me to thinking, well, let's try enticing the person to turn the card over. So what can I do on the front that's going to make them interested on what's on the back side? So what if we just wrote you are dot 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 on the front? And of course they're going to flip it over to see, well, what do you mean you are? What am I? And then on the back, maybe nice and bold, we have the word forgiven. And I like the idea. I like where this is headed, having that nice and bold. And then maybe our scripture just lives you know, subtly off to the right. And then as I'm thinking on squares, it's like, well, what about a different shape? You know, maybe we should explore doing a circle of front and back. If we have our same idea of you are dot, 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 and then forgiven nice and big and bold across the back. And you know, it might be a really cool idea to have the scripture follow the shape of the card. So again, back to our basic principles, we're working with shapes, and um, we're echoing the circle. And, you know, let your mind just wander, you know. What if we put a brad in the card? You know, so there's two pieces. In this, so the first piece says you are, and then the other piece will slide out from underneath and possibly say, you know, forgiven. So we got your you are on the front, and then maybe a bold forgiven on the back. So that's kind of a cool idea. And as you're doing your sketches, just kind of think, you know, which of these, your heart's going to go to one. You know, you're going to keep referring back to it in your mind. So right now, I'm still loving this idea of having the UR on the front and then the forgiven on the back because I think it's really intriguing to have that, um, that anticipation of turning the card. But then as I'm doing this, I think, okay, well, clearly this is God speaking to us. He's telling us, you are forgiven. So what if, what if it's a speech bubble? You know, cut your card in the shape of a little speech bubble. You are forgiven. And you can see my sketches, they're messy. You know, and that's, that's part of the point because you're just quickly throwing your ideas out. And so then the back of the card would be the reverse <clears throat> of the speech bubble. I don't know, maybe the scripture lives off to the left. And we have all this nice white space. So what would we do with that? What if we put a real pretty, you know, bouquet of flowers or something? I mean, that might be cute because I'm giving this to girls, um, teenage girls. And often when you're forgiving someone, you give them a bouquet of flowers. So that might be a cute idea. So after going through all of these, I'm still, I'm still right here. I'm, I'm loving this idea. So from here, I'm going to go to um, another software program called Illustrator. And I'm going to keep this sketch up, or I'm going to keep my sketchbook near me so I can refer to it. And let's just go into Illustrator here. And so I've got my squares, my front of the card and the back of the card. And let's just start with our type. We know we're going to say, you are dot, dot, dot. We're going to 
put that right on the front. Dot, dot, dot. And we'll bring that right here to the front of the page and we're going to make it nice and big because I want it to live right in the center. And font is one of the design principles that you really need to consider. Um, I'm a big fan of Gotham because of its roundness. I love how round and clean and symmetrical it is. And also that's going to be a really good font for our audience and our audience being teenagers. Um, you have to consider font like say for instance what if I was um, gonna try to reach young toddlers maybe in my you know Sunday school class or something. I would maybe do a font that was a little more playful. And then here's another option. What if we were going to talk with adults? Maybe we would choose a font that was maybe a serif or a cursive. So keep that in mind when you're picking different fonts. Keep your audience in mind. So let's do you are forgiven. And then um, do I want it to have an exclamation point? I'm thinking no, because I don't want it to be like God screaming at us. You are forgiven. <laughs> so... <laughs> We just want it nice and subtle because it's it's gentle and that's what I want. But something I do want to do is make it nice and bold. First let me select the correct Gotham. Here we go. I'm going to leave that in light and then I'm going to make this one a really, really heavy bold because I love the impact that that has. Because those words are so powerful. You are forgiven. And then, um, and as I'm designing this, I'm thinking, you know what, I think I wanna change it to say, I am forgiven. I have to contemplate that. No, I think I'm gonna leave it with you are. Um, but something interesting about this font, see how these ellipses, is that what those guys are called? Yes. Those three little dots? <laughs> okay. They're little squares, and I don't think that's accurate. I think they should be circles. So what I'm going to do is get rid of those guys, and I'm going to um, put in three dots instead. I like that a lot better. We're just going to leave that set. So you can see some line principles that we're working with. We have this really strong horizontal line going through the center. And um, as I was doing this, I thought, okay, how cool would it be for the back side to say, you are forgiven over and over and over and just fill the entire background of the back side. And what I like about that idea is because God tells us we are forgiven over and over and over and over and over. He doesn't just say it once. And, you know, he's never like, look, I told you you were forgiven yesterday, so come on, get on with it. <laughs> he's not that way. He constantly tells us we are forgiven every day as many times as we need to hear it. So with that in mind, I love that idea of repeating it in the background. Let's see what that would look like. So we're just going to grab it and duplicate it. So I think that's really cool. So what I'd like to do is um, make it softer. Like a real nice, mm. easy gray. Yeah, I like that. And look how cool that is. It's so cool. I mean, that I, that to me is so powerful, that design alone. I mean, we're going to go farther, but it's already moving in a good direction. So, let's take our scripture. In my sketch, if you refer back to the one that I like, the scripture lives on the far right side of the design, kind of like that. I think that's good, but when you put it in, maybe play with it a bit. You know, move it way over and see how you like that. And I don't like that. It's too close and it's uncomfortable on the edge. And let's try it over here. And step back and look at it. The reason I don't like that is because it gives too much emphasis on 
the word for, and I don't want to do that. So let's bring it back to where it was. And um, again with our design principles, now we have a really strong vertical line. Even though it's not a physical line, your eye sees a line visually. And we've got our strong horizontal lines, which are echoed in more horizontal lines of the you are forgiven, you are forgiven, you are forgiven going in the background. So I kind of like that. And then something I just thought of, what if we brought it to the center? How cool would that be? I love it coming right off of the eye, which kind of gives emphasis to the eye because not only are you are forgiven, but I'm forgiven. And I love referring to giving that eye some power. So let's give it even more power by making it our spice element. Let's try that. So what if we just took that eye and made it a really cool hot pink? Look how neat that is. I, love that. I mean, that is just too cool. <laughs> so, okay, that's working. And when you're designing, just let things go. You know, you gotta feel it. Let your heart just be open to anything. Um, like, I didn't know I was gonna make that eye pink. But I think that's pretty cool, and I love it because it speaks to I am forgiven, also you are forgiven, and it's our spice element that I spoke of earlier. So I think it's important to bring something to the front of the card that echoes the back, because right now the front is just too plain, kind of boring. So what if we took that eye, the pink eye, and brought it to the front, so we had these little rectangles, you know, going down in repetition all the way down the side. That would be kind of cool. Again, echoing the horizontal lines on the back of the page. Now we've got a little taste of it on the front. Not a lot, just a little. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going to lock those up so I don't. this guy up and make it make all those pink so I step back and I look at this and I'm like okay I like that all right but it still needs something to just add a little bit more interest so how about this what if what if we took this one pink bar and got rid of it. Look how cool that is. It's cool. So it's allowing the words to carry you across the page, which is going to make you want to turn it over and see the other side. And then this pink rectangle is missing, but look where it is. It's mm -hmm. over here on the back. Love it. So be really thoughtful about your designs. Like don't the number one thing you should try not to do is throw in everything you like. Like when you're making a soup, you wouldn't put in every single thing you like. Like you like spaghetti, and you like pizza, and you like brownies, and you like cookies. You're not going to all put that in the soup. It's like you're just going to put you know, some broth and some carrots and maybe some onion and spices. So that's what you want, also want to do with your design. It's like be very thoughtful and simplistic. And always less is more when it comes to design. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, I think I'm really liking where this is going. Let's, um, let's look at a finished product here. How about this? Nice. Yeah, I think that is really cool. So now you can use these cards to be encouragement to others. You can print those out on a nice heavy card stock. Oh, you know what? There is one last thing that I decided to do at the very last minute. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. Inside the letter I is the words forgive you. So I forgive you. <laughs> so how cool is that? Another little secret spice element. Just a little something to make the design even more powerful and intriguing. I love so, it. So, yeah, use these cards to be encouragement to others.
I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach me at American Heritage Girls, and I'll be happy to answer your design questions. I look forward to hearing from you. That is so fun, Becky. Thank you so much for your time. I've learned so much. Now, girls, you can do this at home on a graphic um, graphic software or app and print the cards out, like Becky said, or you can do it on paper. Try your own styles and have as much fun as you want choosing identity cards and verses to send to your friends and loved ones. So thank you for your time, Becky. You're welcome. Bye, girls.